right. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing? Doing great? All right. Uh, no problem. Um, welcome for those of you uh, following us online. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I don't know if you can see. You probably can't, but we have a bunch of tables set up. We're just going to kind of party and hang out here today, and it's going to be a it's going to be a good day. We're excited about it. So got a lot of good food, and we're just going to eat, but what we're going to we're basically most of the day we'll just be hanging out and talking and eating together and and we're that's what we're going to do all right so we have a few things uh that we are going to do together and we're going to talk about and uh so i want to start today we're going to kind of get all of this stuff out of the way is that all right and then we're going to after we're done with a few things then we're going to go get our food all right and then we're going to come back in and then we're just going to kind of hang out and talk all right so if you were here last week or if you uh, listened or followed along on uh, online last week and watched it, we talked about, I asked you to, to pray about three things, right? I want you to pray about, I want us to pray about uh, showing up, about sharing the wealth, and about spreading the word. Those are the three things. How many of you prayed about those things this week at all? Anyone? Anyone? Thank you. Awesome. Great. You can pray about them right now, right? Let's just... Take a minute. Okay, good. Now, so that's what we're praying about. And by the way, you can continue to pray about these things as we go into the fall. We're praying about how we can, uh, how we can show up, right, for simplicity, how we show up for one another. Remember, we talked about that our, this is an organism. It's a system. It's not a hierarchy necessarily. It's not a, a business. It is a, it's a system, and it, all, it takes all of us. Amen? And so we all are going to be antibodies to the literal literal infection that has kind of hit us. We had a we have a pandemic still going on, and it's hit us. And uh, so we're going to all be antibodies to fight against that. And the way we fight against that is praying about these three things. We're going to pray about showing up. How do we show up, right? How can we help? How can how can I contribute, right? Secondly, I'm going to pray about. Uh, sharing the wealth. And that's the idea of giving. And that's the one that everybody kind of backs out and says, Oh, no, that's too much. He's talking about my money now. And uh, but it does take money to keep the lights on to put the air on and to pay the rent and, and the stuff that we do. Amen. And so we're gonna, I want us all to pray about that. I didn't say this last week, but I want to say it now. Um, as you pray about it, God might say, I want you to do more than you've done. God might say, I want you to keep on doing what you are doing. And God might say, you don't have to give that much, all right? I literally, and I'm going to leave that open to what, however God leads us individually is what we commit to, to trusting God, amen? Um, and that's in all three areas, not just giving, but um, all of these are, are vitally important that we join together. So showing up, spread, uh, sharing the wealth, and spreading the word, right? We're going to spread the word. How, how do we, uh, social media, uh, at work, uh, with our friends and our family? How do we spread the word that this is a safe place? I think it really is. That this is an open and an affirming and a loving place. It's a not. It's a kind of a judgment-free zone. <laughs> like you can be an atheist here. You can be agnostic. You can, you can be someone who is like, you know, you were born in the church, right? On the third row. Anyone like that? Like that person that was born at the state fair? Like that kid's life is set. You know when you're born at the fair? Okay, so anyways, I'm just saying, like, when you're born at church, right, um, you know that there's stuff going on, right? Or this might be, like, your second time to show up to anything called church, right? And so there's all kinds of different ways to spread the word and to do those things that we're, that we're talking about. Um, so that's what we're doing, and, and that's what we're praying about together, and let's make this fall just exciting and wonderful and beautiful and open to new people and new communities and new individuals and new life. Amen. All right. So we thought what better way to do that than to just sit down and hang out and eat together. Right. Let's just take, cause you can't, you can't be really cool when you eat. Right. I mean, I can't cause I've got a beard. Things always end up here. Right. And uh, you just can't be cool anymore. You just have to kind of be yourself and hang out and, and just get to know each other, right? So I'm hoping that you will, at these tables and uh, even online, you know, ask questions and get to know each other and, and figure out about each other and learn to know each other better, all right? Um, what we want to do before we break bread is we want to also break bread, 
right? There's two kinds of breaking bread. And uh, there's literally uh, the breaking bread where we have a meal together, right? And then there's kind of the spiritualized communion. There's breaking bread. And so breaking bread for the community of faith is, it kind of entails both of those things. So you see in the middle of your table, you see some elements, the sacramental elements, right? You have bread and juice. <laughs> We're DOC, so we do juice. Um, so depending on how long that's set out. And just kidding. So here's what we want you to do, okay? Together, we are going to receive this meal together right now, all right? So one at a time, if you would just take and get a piece of bread and take one cup, take one cup. And please, please, once you have that cup and use it, please keep that cup. We're going to use it later for something else. So don't throw it away. Don't stack them up. Keep that cup in front of you. And what better way to show what simplicity is like to have like shot glasses for, <laughs> for communion? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you're at home today, go ahead and get something. You might have a donut available, uh, a Ritz cracker, whatever you've got, right? Some of you at home get to actually have real wine when you do this, right? All right. So do we have the prayer ready? We're going to, let's do this. So this is, this is what I love about the early churches. This is what they did all the time. Literally, every time they got together, they would do this. They would, they would have a moment where they would break this holy bread and take this holy meal together. And then, then literally, they would hang out and eat a meal together. This is really kind of how the early church did this, is kind of what we're doing today, just hanging out. You take communion to kind of set your heart, set your mind, set your spirit on things above, amen, on what God is doing, the destiny that God has for us as a community of believers. But then we would eat, they would eat together, just like we're going to eat together today, right? And we're going to hang out and we're going to know each other and love each other better. But it starts because Jesus gave his life for all of us. Amen. And this is what is the glue. The body and blood is what makes us be able to love one another, to love ourselves, to love our community and to, to reach out, all right? So let us prepare our hearts for this part of the meal by praying this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And he took the bread and he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then he poured out the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of the sin of the world. Take all of you and drink. God, we thank you that you broke your body and poured out your blood so that we might be family, so that we might be together, and so that we might have compassion on others. And I pray, Father, as we, as a simplicity, pray about showing up, sharing the wealth, spreading the word, that we would be family that moves together and walks together and lives life together in a way that opens up community for so many people that need it in this area, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now, one last thing that we're gonna do together to get all the stuff done and finished is we're gonna go ahead and do a time of giving right now, all right? Uh, I believe Catherine and Charlie are, are going to actually, so you don't have to move. What we're gonna do is just pass some plates around and if you wanna give. Now, also, if you give online, if you give online, we have these little, uh, cards out there that say I give online because a lot of people when they pass a plate they think oh my gosh it always looks like I never put anything in and they're like no I actually just give online on Givelify and so if you do that that's how I give by the way I always give online 
So you can put those little markers in there that say, I give online, if you want to do that, okay? So this is the thing, and we're going we're gonna to start uh, doing this again in the fall, and we're going to start doing communion uh, again, where we come through the line. We're, we'll talk about that next week, but we're going to start doing some things a little bit that kind of create more of a community feel uh, for us as we walk into the fall. So today, uh, if, if you have uh, prayed about that and you want to give, we always say, there's no pressure to give. If you feel like, like that's not my thing right now, then that's great. All right. Keep on praying about that. Maybe there's a time where you feel open and led, but we believe that it takes all of us and doing something. So let's, let's do it that way. And then, um, and then, like I said, we, we try to make it as possible, as easy as possible to give by going to Givelify and looking up Simplicity Christian Church LLC or something. It's like this really long, there it is. What's that? You can also do it by location tracking. There you go. We track you. <laughs> so let me, let me pray over this part, and then we're going to give, and then we're going to go get food, all right? All right. God, thank you for the opportunity to give and to be a part of your community. We uh, are all, again, we're all praying about how we can show up, how we can share the wealth, and how we can spread the word. And so this is part of us. Uh, helping and and share and spreading and uh, sharing wealth back into the kingdom of God. We pray that you would use this so that lives can be changed in Jesus name. Amen. All right. They're going to pass those around after your table is done, then please go ahead and start getting food and then come right back in and get to your table. Thank you. And that we are doing all of this now, um, getting prepared but it's also another kind of special day. Liz, do you have our extra? Simplicity is five. But Israel is also 50. I, I want to thank him for lining up with five and 50 so we could have done that. It's because simplicity was five and we throw on the zero because you're second important. Okay, that's okay. Hand me that white bag. Don't look in it. Sorry, I have my notes. Don't look at this paper. <laughs> so I talked to Lindy and I was like, Lindy, I need some things that he'll love and appreciate. And hang on. I was told that you have a love for Queen. Is that right? And you're our Queen, Israel. So in honor, we have a t shirt, a Queen t shirt. I have a little Dwight Yoakam for your life. Oh, yes. This is the trashiest <laughs> mug for your tea that I could ever find. Yes. Don't you love Dwight? I love Dwight. He loves Dwight. I, I learn things. Thing. Yeah. Don't you look great? Yeah. A few people to speak today because you guys hear from us all the time. It gets old, I know. So I'm going to have Lindy. Do you want to come first, Lindy? Or do you not want to? I know that you're, you have a certain order. Lindy wants to get it over with. She has a, she's got the right attitude today. All right, Lindy, you're up, sister. Thank you. So I love you guys. And um, it, most of, well, I don't even know if most of you, I shared my story here years ago when we first started, maybe three years ago. It's on YouTube if you want to hear it. I'm not going to go into all of it. Um, but essentially, you know, like a lot of us got hurt, beyond hurt, um, in my church community, really devastating. I mean, devastating. And um, decided I was done. I didn't need the church. I was getting sober. So I had my recovery community. And then I met Israel. And, um, you know, there was always an understanding from the beginning that I did not have to do the church thing with him. <clears throat> and so I didn't for a while. He was going to St. A's. Episcopal Church, and I'd go with him occasionally, and I just really love that he wasn't like, you know, if we're going to be together, we have to be equally yoked, you know, and come to church together. <laughs> he respected the fact that I might be out on church in a building, and um, but 
I start to thaw out at St. Augustine's on the pews there, thawed out. And then here, I've been able to, um, I've spent so many years. I mean, I started getting sober in 2013. So, and that's when my life blew up, the church blew up. So it's been a long time. I've spent a lot of these years so angry about the church, mad at what the church is doing, you know, and um, that was part of my process. I've also done a lot of work and I can say I've done a lot of healing. You know, some of those people that hurt me back then over the last couple of years, I've had an opportunity to get face to face with them and they received what I said you know, instead of saying like, well, I didn't, you know, but I also could understand that they were doing the best that they knew how to do at the time. So it was like, we both kind of um, came to a place of understanding. And so just, I love what we do here. Um, because there are people out there that still want to do church in a building. Um, but different than the churches that we came from in that we want to love people and not just love them, but actually be there in their lives to help them um, meet their needs. I know this church has met some of my needs over the last few years, um, specific needs, and I'm grateful. And I really love you guys. I mean, I look forward to coming. I look forward to getting here. I don't like getting ready. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Sunday mornings, but I don't want to get ready. I just want to be here. So I was thriving in the pandemic when we were on Zoom, you know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so... I love you all, and what I hope for us as we move, you know, into the future, that we can continue to be a church that meets needs, and not just financial needs, although financial needs are a big deal. There are a lot of people in our community and outside of our community that um, <clears throat> being able to get help with food or a bill or whatever, gas, I mean, that, that stuff really <laughs> changes things, um, and also just being able to serve, you know, show up in people's lives however we can pick up the phone and call someone when you need them, answer the phone when they call you, you know, break bread together. This is my very favorite thing. We're going to have potlucks regularly moving forward because like, if we're not breaking bread together, then why are we here? Like, I know it's important to hear the word, right? <laughs> but this is just as important. So I love you all. And I'm so grateful to see you all here today. And thanks for bringing all the delicious food. I want to do uh share a few thoughts about simplicity, uh, about our future. Thoughts that are based on my own experiences at Heritage Hall and in the larger <clears throat> Oklahoma City community. Uh, so I wanna think of this in terms of a tale of two communities. Before I get into it, in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you, um, <clears throat> that God spoke to me this morning, as he does every day. Uh, but my wife will also tell you that I am hearing impaired. And, and so you need to take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, because uh, this is not coming from on high. When, when I arrived in Oklahoma City uh, to take the position of headmaster at Heritage Hall in 1988, um, <clears throat> enrollment was already down from its four-year high in 1984, down by 100. Um, Heritage Hall, uh, like most of the private schools in Oklahoma City, does not uh, rely on uh, voluntary giving, we charge a tuition for our services. Uh, and we have bills to pay, a faculty that expects to be paid regularly, uh, og and &E. um, <clears throat> uh, I was surprised when I discovered that we had a $125,000 a year og and &E bill. Um, <clears throat> so I began to feel uh, a lot of pressure because uh, I noticed fairly early on in my tenure that enrollment was continuing a decline. We were almost in free fall, so that by 1986, uh, uh, 96, uh, we had declined from the 816 students that I, uh, that I inherited to 656. So if you look at that, that 
12 year decline from 1984 to 1996 of 256 students. In those days, that translated to $1.8 million in a budget that was three and a half million. Um, expenses had continued to grow. We were giving the faculty raises every year. So how did we work this out? <clears throat> well, we did what businesses do that are trying to survive. We occasionally cut programs and people are programs. So people lost their jobs, people who were doing a good job for us, but we just couldn't support them. Um, I tell you all this not to discourage or to depress, but merely to suggest that uh, Heritage Hall was still a relatively young school as independent schools go. It was 20 years old when I arrived and 25 years old when we were moving toward the bottom. And <clears throat> the question that the Board of Trustees was asking me, um, <clears throat> as if I would know, uh, is well, what are we going to do to stem the decline here? I mean, we got to build enrollment. Um, how are we going to do that? And the answer I gave was, I have no idea. I am fresh out of ideas. I've done everything I know how to do. Um, <clears throat> and I began to wonder whether maybe we needed new leadership, somebody who just had different, better, more experiences than I had, whose leadership would be more inspiring, that draw more people to the school. Uh, what I knew was that we had neither a moral nor a constitutional right to exist. We offered services and programs, and to the extent that people felt those services and programs were worthy of their time and treasure, uh, we were going to be in business. But um, but you can only cut so many people and so many programs before people who have been happy with your institution suddenly begin to think, yeah, boy, if we're not going to have a tennis program anymore, or if we're not going to have a choral music program anymore, why do I want to be here? So H H, -H rebounded. Uh, <clears throat> I cannot tell you why. Uh, we, uh, we began to, to grow enrollment again. Uh, it, within a decade, reached new all-time highs. Uh, we're over 900 again, uh, and continue to thrive. Uh, faculty's better, programs are better, the administration's better, facilities are better, everything's better. I don't know how that happened. And so I can't, based on my own experience, uh, give you a blueprint for a turnaround at simplicity. Well, all you got to do is this, this, and this, check those boxes, and you'll be at a 1,000 in no time. Um, here is a reality that has come to me as I've thought about this from the position of somebody who has led an institution, a large institution, that employs 200 people and, and has 900 kids. Um, whether you charge tuition or whether you simply ask for an offering every week, uh, institutions like families uh, cost money and they just do. Uh, I would love to live in Gallardia or at least Sometimes I think I would, um, but I can't afford that. So I understand the concept of can't afford. Um, there was a time when we couldn't afford the, the house we live in now. Uh, there are a lot of things we're looking forward to doing in retirement that we've never done, largely because we couldn't afford it. So I get that. Um, the challenge that we're faced with today um, is how are we going to get through the 12, the next 12 to 18 months? And when we come to the other side of it, what is it going to look like? Will we be in a position 
to continue paying our bills. Um, I want to be clear. Uh, I am not suggesting that we need somehow to try to uh, extract blood from the proverbial stone. Um, I suspect that most of us are doing what we reasonably can do. It's not like we got a bunch of holdouts here who could be dropping four or $500 a week in the plate and just didn't see the need. Um, so I don't think that asking everybody to do more is the solution to our problem. Uh, it may bias three more months or six more months if people really feel the pain, but I don't know that that's what church ought to be all about, um, feeling pain. So that's a tale of, uh, of one community, but I said a tale of two communities, and you were thinking simplicity. The other community that I have in mind is Britain Christian Church, which is a DOC about 10 blocks up the street on the other side of Classen. Uh, they were a church that was struggling, I think, uh, with numbers. They were in a declining community. I think there are people in the room probably know more about Britain Christian than I do. Uh, what I know is that uh, I learned quite by accident um, over a relatively short period of time that several Heritage Hall trustees, stockbrokers, doctors, lawyers, had decided in relatively recent years, this is in the early 90s, that they wanted to be at Britain Christian Church because they liked the idea of what that church represented. They liked the idea of a community, not of affluent people, but that represented the full range of, of a community uh, in socioeconomic terms. And they felt they had a role to play um, and they played that role and were very generous. Um, you know, next thing I knew they're running a capital campaign to build or enlarge uh, their, their gymnasium. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to the dedication of three tennis courts, um, which has provided a, a program that's really special for them. Um, I don't know how they did it either. Uh, so that I guess the thought that I want to leave you with today is that what they did was to provide a need um, interestingly enough, mostly for a bunch of white straight guys who, who, who did well, but were feeling an emptiness in their lives. Um, they wanted to be a part of something that made a difference. Um, so I want to suggest that um, it'd probably be a good idea if some of us had a conversation with the leadership of Britain Christian, find out a little bit more about what they did. Um, I think that we have a, a different mission than Britain Christian. Um, and it's one that appeals to me. Uh, my family will tell you that um, if I were ever to tell you my story, it would be dull as dishwater. It doesn't include church. Um, but it, it includes, it includes family. And, uh, you know, I, I love what my family has become. My nuclear family, my Heritage Hall family, um, and the people in this small family. I like who we are. I like the way we treat each other. Again, uh, not somebody that most people would consider a religious person, but I like the New Testament. I like what it's about. I like that it's a blueprint for the way we ought to live our lives. Um, I, you know, I, I, I wish I could tell you that I was a person of great faith, uh, and I don't know that I am, 
but I believe in the power of love. I believe in the redemption that comes from forgiveness. Uh, I believe that all people should be treated with dignity and with regard. And I think that's what I find so appealing about this place. And I got to believe that there are a lot of other people out there who have been hurt or disappointed with their church experience and might find that this is a place to land. Some of them are going to be teachers, but some of them are going to be stockbrokers and doctors. Um, we know those people. And I think that if we're going to if we're going to be paying all of our bills 18 months from now, um, I think it's going to be not as a result of the people in this room really digging down and giving more deeply. I think it's going to come from growing this congregation. Yeah. And so, yeah, showing up's important and giving is important, but I think the solution is, as it always has been, spreading the word. And on that note, I'm going to sit on down. I did want to uh, share a few words, and I told Jamie I'd write some stuff down so that I kind of stayed on track and on target and on time and those kinds of things, but um, I kind of wanted to share it in a song. So, um, since I don't have a band, um, here you go. Oh, this is an ad. Sorry, you're saving with Liberty Mutual right now. Just kidding, you got Rickrolled. I'm not singing. Um, okay, so, friends, family, um, I actually did put in a couple of notes. Um, first of all, how many of you love my shirt? Okay. So yes, you've seen it a couple of times. One, it's blue, it's floral, it's Daniel Cremieux, which is one of my favorite people as far as clothes go. I'm not a big clothes person, but I like Daniel Cremieux. Plus the back of it, the sacred we. You've heard me talk so many times when I've been up here about the sacred we. Um, and I thought about that this morning, last night for a long time, uh, about that. And then it was really funny when I walked in, I saw that, that Sam actually had the postcard that I left on my table. Um, there's a couple of them out front that say is, uh, pronouns matter. Pronouns matter around here. Um, I am, uh, father to children that pronouns matter. Uh, I am a lover of people that pronouns matter. Um, driving in this morning, I was thinking about the sacred we and how we is not they versus us. We is we. Um, Catherine and Jamie, I wore my rainbow socks today. Um, uh, Jace, my oldest. Jace is moving next week. Um, there's a point to this. Um, Jace is moving next week, and it's it's actually it's super exciting, <laughs> the opportunity. Um, going to Old Miss for grad school. Um, we'll miss the Pride Parade next week. Um, so one of the reasons I'm here um, was to find family, to find community that would love my kids, that I could love others in the LGBTQ community. I remember coming here to hear a guest speaker, not knowing that Israel was going to be here, not knowing that the guy that I'd heard play sets at Full Circle Bookstore was going to be leading worship. 
not knowing that the Morris family was going to be on the front row that I had grown up with. Um, you know, this is family. Um, I did actually write just a few things down and, you know, and, and, and as a good, a good sermon would be, it has to be, you know, alliterated and there has to be at least three points and I did four. So there's a bonus, um, you know, and I'm going to say, and I'll wrap up with this, which means I'm just getting started. Um, for those of you that don't know, I did actually, I, I, I went to graduate school for a while uh, for ministry and that's a whole nother story in and of itself. Um, but I was thinking back to who we are, relationships, love, and service. And I was thinking about how that's applied to me and how someone else's hopes and dreams got me here. <laughs> to allow me to have hopes and dreams for the future of this place. The four things I wrote down were enlightened, encouraged, enabled, and empowered. I stand up here today, not because I'm any better, any different, any more special than anybody else. Stirring up trouble is probably the most accurate representation. I have been loved through a lot of crap. And I hope I've loved in return. Um, opportunities for prism, Bible study, systematic theology, book brigade, reading books I would have never pulled off of a shelf, learning from perspectives I would have never read, hearing from theology professors, hearing from pastors from churches I would have never visited. All of you out there, the colors of the rainbow. I mean, this is, this is who we are. And this is where we're going. Um, we have this interesting paradox here, being a church and not. There's some people that I've talked to about this. And, you know, when I was in school for ministry, so many of the people there were pastors or youth ministers or missionaries on furlough or this or that or the other. And I was just a guy that wanted to love people and care about people. And I really, I didn't want to cross on a building. I didn't want Baptist, Christian, Catholic, Methodist, Lutheran. I didn't want any name associated with it because I remember growing up having friends that we could play on the playground with, but come Wednesday or Sunday, we didn't mix because we didn't go to that church or they didn't come to our church. I remember being in college. I had a lot of friends that were involved in, in the Baptist collegiate ministries and people that were involved in the Wesley ministries and people that were involved in Baha'i and people that were involved. I didn't dare step foot in any of those because that wasn't where I came from. And I missed out on a lot of stuff and a lot of love. My hope and dream for simplicity is that we outgrow the warehouse. Not because of money, not because of, but because there are people out there that need every one of you. <laughs> I started with the pride parade. I mean, people bring up the pride parade all the time. And, and I love being able to say, passed out <laughs> next to Pulse underwear store. And they said, what? And I said, yeah, I was marching with my church in the pride parade and overheated and was dehydrated. And I was back there. And then between Pulse Underwear Store and the cannabis water stand, I passed clean out. And everybody said, bring him water, cool him off, take his shoes off, take his shirt off. No, leave the shirt on, please. Shoes are good. And they said, wait, what was this? I said, yeah, I was there with my church. They're like, what kind of church do you go to? I go to Simplicity. <laughs> it's 
good to see full tables out there, but there's so much more than this. And I know that there's some of you watching online that couldn't be here today or that are just checking us out going, what the heck is this? Man, whether you're out there or whether you're in here, we are, we are so much bigger than what you see. This is not the end. No, we're close. I love you guys. Thank, thank you three for sharing. Um, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Um, I know that there's other people that have something to say, but we're already past 1130. And I, so what I don't want to do is, is force time. But so, so can we do something that we do on Wednesday nights? I'm going to go ahead and officially dismiss you. Okay. After I pray, but I know that there might be others that want to share. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. Out of respect for your time and out of respect for those who also might want to share, I want to do two things. Number one, I'll pray. And then if you need to leave or get your kids or do something that will you quietly go ahead and, and, and dismiss. And, and I don't want to override your time. Amen. I, I think that that's important that we, treat your time as precious and as important. So oh, you were, if you need, I was saying, if you need, we're going to officially dismiss. And if you need to get your kids, or if you have other uh, appointments or things that you need to do, do that, but do that quietly. Because what I also want to do is honor, if there's anyone else that would like to very quickly just share a couple of words of something that, that you have a hope for this place, you have a dream for this place or what it means. We're going to try to quickly go. So I'm going to, secondly i'll say this uh thanks for uh the birthday wishes and all that stuff and everything so um i appreciate that and i love you all and uh you mean yeah I, i'm like adam you're you're your family your family and i don't want to be so dramatic as to say if there weren't simplicity i wouldn't go anywhere but man i don't know where the heck i mean it'd be really really hard we went to St. Augustine's for a few years. It's a wonderful place. It is, right? It's a wonderful place. Mike was there. Lindy and I went, it was a wonderful place in a lot of ways, but it's not simplicity. It's just not. And so uh, I, I am inf incredibly grateful. God, thank you for this place. And thank you for these wonderful human beings. Thank you for the sacred we. Thank you that, that in so many ways, this is not the end, but only the beginning. And we all commit to continue to pray and to believe and to spread the word and to help others become a part of the sacred we. In your name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. We talk about how we except every kind of bird here right and I'm really going through some stuff which I'm not going to share with my son but I was feeling really alone this week and I was feeling really alone last week and I was just kind of like well this is okay I guess whatever and then we had like a tragedy happen this week and my first thought was oh no I'm all alone and my next thought was, no, I'm not. I can go to Simplicity and they'll love me there. They won't judge me. And I think there's other people who need that, who don't feel accepted by their family or by their friends, or they just feel like they don't have anywhere to go. And even though I feel that way, and I know it's not true, it was easy to come here because I don't have to tell you what's going on. I don't have to be anything. I can just be me and I can walk in the door and cry if that's what I need to do. So I love this place and I think that I have friends and stuff that I always say, oh, well, if you feel alone, like, let's go with me. Like, there's, they love you. They don't care where you came from. I just feel like that's so important because other churches sometimes are like that. Hello. Um, so my name is Kim. I'm one of the people who comes up here and says I'm agnostic today or atheist today or what have you. Um, I just want to say if simplicity did not exist, I would not be going to church ever. I will just stay at home and just listen to Coldplay the whole time. Like just channel my inner Jamie and just like deal with that. Um, but I, I have a lot of friends, like we went to this old church together and they've like, you know, deconstructed, right? Like we're all just, we're all just a mess. It's fine. Um, and so we haven't been to church in like years. And so they, we started, you know, COVID's 
it's not lifting, but here we are, uh, we're acting like it is. And so um, they've asked me like, hey, what have you been doing for two years? And uh, they're like, I say, well, they're like, are you going to a church? And I'm like, well, I go to Simplicity because I refuse to say Simplicity Church because it is what it is. Like it's a church, sure. Like you can't, you can't come here and it not be a church because we worship and we pray and there's literally like communion and things like that. But I just kind of tell my friends, like, you, like it's a safe place because that's what it is. Like, you will hear worship music. I will gasp when we sing Chris Tomlin. That's just what happens. Uh, but it's like a safe place to land. I think someone said that. And so that's all that I ever wanted in my whole life was just like the safest place. And I think that's what we bring to the table. And so I don't know. I don't know what the future is. I don't know if I have dreams. I'm just cool with we, what we are. Like, so don't change what we are. Go. Um, okay, so I wasn't planning on this. So there's no telling what's gonna come out of my mouth. It's gonna be beautiful. Thank you, Kim. So um, I started coming to Simplicity with Brittany uh, during the pandemic, like on Zoom. That was how I was introduced to Simplicity. And um, my journey with church has been a little interesting, but my journey with myself has been equally as interesting. So uh, a couple of years ago, actually about two years ago, I came out to, well, first myself, and my first week with Simplicity, it wasn't even talking about the LGBTQ plus community at all, but Israel just threw in just like a, you know, I would really like to do a, uh, a week about this verse in relation to the LGBTQ plus community. And like that moment was like, this is where I need to be because I need, I needed that because church has been such an important part of my life. And I didn't feel like where I came from, they were supportive. And uh, I just love that you guys talk. Like in school, it's always like, we're not gonna fix anything if you don't talk about it. And I love that you guys talk about everything. So that's, that's really it. Awesome. Yep, <laughs> got this, okay. So um, I grew up in a Baptist church, like I was born there. Um, <laughs> it's all I've ever known. Um, and they were good people. You know, so many people I love. A uh, youth group, Falls Creek for 10 plus years. I mean, I don't know. Um, so things changed um, during this election cycle, um, during the last five years or so. Um, it's been sad to see it bring out the worst in people. Um, Facebook, you see people's hearts and you can't unsee it. Um, and I just felt this ain't it, <laughs> you know, like this, this ain't it. Um, and I just, we were at GAs and, um, girls in action, Baptist thing. I took my daughter and I was helping teach it. And, um, it was just after class one day, one of the teachers made a comment. It was so stupid. It was about frozen two coming out and they were freaking out because they thought Elsa might be a lesbian. I mean, they were freaking out. I'm not taking my kids to see that or boycott Disney. Same thing they did during Beauty and the Beast because they thought whatever his name used to, I don't know. And I was like, I refuse to bring my daughter up in this. I refuse. And that was the turn, that was it. Um, that was it. And it was really hard for me. My family was there, um, my parents, plus everybody I knew all that I knew, it was really hard, but that was in 2018. So for a few years, um, I just didn't go to church because I felt like I couldn't. Same, I felt like if I wanted to feel the way I did, have the beliefs I did, it went against everything that I'd been taught. So I was trying to reconcile it. Um, and it's really funny because I don't know if you guys know S Steph and Adrian, Steph, twins. the twins. So I lived down the street from them and uh, they would always invite me. And Robert Winters, I grew up with him in the same church that I'm talking about. Um, so I grew up, or not grew up, they, they were always inviting me and I never came with them, um, which is weird that I came when, and they're not here. Um, <laughs> I don't know anybody, but anyway, so they were always invite me. So I started watching it during the pandemic because I needed it. I mean, just during this whole time that I'm not with church, I felt like I needed it so badly, but I didn't know where to go. And uh, so I thought, I'm just gonna check, I'm just gonna check it out. 
And so I did, and I loved it. And then the first day that I came, I came with my husband and my daughter. I was sitting there, and I was just listening to, you know, this sermon. And I thought, this is it. <laughs> I started sobbing. I'm like, love. I just felt it. I felt the, like, I thought this is what it's supposed to feel like. It finally all clicked. I thought this, this is it. I was going through a really hard time, really, really, really hard time. Um, I'd taken pain medicine for 10 years. Uh, I have a lot of health problems. It's going to the doctor, but still 10 years. It was really hard, but I needed to get off of them. And um, just in passing, Catherine said, you should talk to Lindy. I mean, like I'd been here once. She's like, yeah, you should talk to Lindy. And I got her number and, and passed it on. And so she said, call me up. So I did. And we talked for two hours. And that was like the first week after I got up, was getting off my medicine. And it was hell. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was hard. And it's been hard since. Having pain and trying to find new ways, you know, to deal with it. But not in that way. Because it just wasn't healthy in so many ways. Anyway, Lindy. Um, she has no idea, none, how much she helped me and stood in when I literally didn't feel like I had anywhere to go. I struggled with this the whole time. I was at my other church. Nobody knew. I felt like I couldn't, you know, you have to hold up that standard. And there was so much judgment and because you, you hear it and you see it on Facebook and you know that you're not safe. And so anyway, Lindy talks about, we should be there, you know, pick up the phone call or we, she did, she picked it up for me. And um, I joined on Mother's Day and I make it when I can, or I watch when I can. Um, and I do not talk in front of people, but I just felt like, <sighs> I went to the pride parade for that parade, it didn't get to happen, but I was working with free mom hugs. And um, I was wearing my, my pride shirt because I hadn't planned on working with the free mom hugs, my sister. And she's like, come with me. It was like one of the greatest experiences of my life. Literally, I felt like it changed me. But one of my favorite, proudest moments was for them to say, I was saying, I'm here with my church. And they were shocked literally every time. Really? What church? I'm like, it's amazing. And I was, what? That sounds like nothing. Most of them had grew up in a church and they didn't feel like they... They were loved. They felt like they were outcasts. So many of them, so many of them, where they couldn't tell their parents because their parents were just so much. But anyway, it was the greatest joy. Seriously, greatest joy. And it felt so good to be able to say and not feel like um, I was passing judgment or making somebody feel like I needed to change them. Um, it was just beautiful. And so anyway, I just feel so, so thankful that I found this because it has been a bright point in my life when I've needed it so most, the most. And so I'm just thankful for it. And I want that for other people um, because I know there's so many other people struggling, but they don't say it. They're embarrassed about it. They feel judgment. They're, they're scared um, to be vulnerable like that, to open themselves up. I hadn't told anybody when I told Lenny. I told nobody, not my parents, nobody. So um, <laughs> It was a big deal. So anyway, I just, I want that for other people. And I think there's so many beautiful people here. And I just think uh, it's something that the world needs. A couple of thoughts I've had listening to Adam, you and, and all of you that, that are saying how much you're welcome here and how much you feel family here. I grew up in a very open and accepting faith of uh, the catholic church yeah um <laughs> luckily sandy grew up in an open and welcoming place missouri synod lutheran so you join and they say we're so glad to see you here are the rules and you will follow them and in fact every friday you have to go in and tell somebody how you didn't follow them to be allowed to come sunday you know yeah. here it's accepting we love each other we don't care who you are, what you've done in your past. We're here together to go forward. And that's the secret. Guy was saying he's not sure how he was able 
to make great improvement. I, I suspect he's saving it for his self-help book, but <laughs> we won't. <laughs> no, there, we need, we have the love, we have the community, we have the acceptance. How do we get that word out? And that's where we're at a, a, a roadblock. Before the pandemic, we were doing better. We had a lot, a lot more people, word was getting out. We need to get back to that and expand from there. We don't need more committed people. We need more people yeah. and then let them become committed with us. And then some of us like me should be committed, but, <laughs> but really and truly we need to expand. And that's what we're, that's what our effort needs to be. And we're working with it with Michelle that opens the door. Putting things online opens a door. Let's keep working at it. That's all. So hi. Um, I am extremely thankful for all of you and everyone that I have met here. I came here with my mom in a similar situation to Adam and his family, where she was seeking a place where we could be just fully ourselves and a safe place for me because of who we are. And what? Oh, five. You're not 50 anymore. Not you're, you're five years old. <laughs> but we definitely found it here. I am not the typical church goer that you would think was raised in like a very strict church of Christ, which no hate to that. Um, but I have a lot of religious trauma and it's hard to find a place when you have that trauma from growing up and just kind of feeling like I'm not what y'all want me to be and I'm not ever going to be. I mean, like I wear skeletons and creepy things and I love horror, right? <laughs> I am extremely thankful for everyone here just because there's never been a sense of judgment. The first week I came here, which was, I think mom and I came like a week after Sarah was here once um, and just open arms. The first, I, I, I literally cried the first time I walked through these doors, just hearing everything and the level of acceptance and love from this place. And like, no matter what I'm working through with my own self and where I stand with things, I know that I can come here and just be here. And I don't have to have any obligation. There's no check mark box of who I have to be or what I have to do. I can just exist. And I, I'm always forever going to be thankful for that and thankful for my family here. So. We will always be for one another. Amen? So I'll say this one last time. Let's spread the word. Amen? Let's spread the word. We can be safe during pandemic, but let's spread the word. Let's fill this warehouse up with people who need this place. Amen? And I love each and every one of you, and thank you for sharing. God, we love you most, and we want to be like you. We want to live the Jesus way, and we want to share this with everyone we come into contact with and help us to do that in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. I love you all. Thank you.